Hi YouTube, today we're going to talk about how to duplicate your Macintosh um, drive onto a new drive. I'm doing this because I just got a solid state drive and I need to move my old computer onto it. So, first thing you want to do is confirm that you can fit all your old stuff onto your new stuff, especially if you're moving into a smaller SSD drive. So you select your disk, hit Command I to get info, and you look at the used space on your drive information 8992. That's good because on my other one, I have a capacity. I've already run this one, so you'll see. But my capacity is 128 gigabytes, so I have plenty of space to do this. Now, I ran this once the wrong way, and I'm going to show you how to run it the right way. The first thing we have to do is open up. Uh, disk utility. If you're not familiar with that application, you go to applications and you have to go under and then go into disk utility. Now it's going to look at our disks and what we need to do is format. The problem that I ran into is when I go into repair disk, you see where down in the lower right over here my smart status is not supported and my partition map scheme is unformatted so that's a not smart status so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this disk and partition it with the Mac OS X so I'm going to click erase this disk is unformatted there we go okay I had a little bit of a of a snafu there. So you have to format it before you restore your current hard drive onto your new drive. That's the mistake that I made. So we'll, we'll do this here. You click on your new drive, hit erase. Uh, this is plugged in with a USB cable. Format, journal, and so forth. You hit erase. Uh, Yep, erase. It's creating a map, formatting, this is blah blah blah, with name untitled. Now you're going to lose a little bit of this total available space, 128 gigabytes. I'm going to decide later. Um, see so we click on untitled. We lose, you know, a little bit of space for overhead, so that's not a big deal. Uh, and that's how it's done. So then now that we've formatted that disk, we go over here to our main disk, and I'm right-clicking, or you can control-click, I think, to make this happen. Yeah. And hit Restore. Now we're going to drag the source disk here, and we're going to drag the target disk here. Okay, untitled it is. So, Restore. And Erase and then you need your password and here we go it's um, so it's we're going to end up with the Macintosh hard drive as the name down here it's going to be a clone of the drive uh, I'll decide later so you're asking me this and copying files estimating time this will take a number of hours on an older machine. This is a 2006 uh, white iMac and uh, when I did this before this took between two and three hours. I didn't really pay much attention. I just came back and it was done. So I will see you on the other side of this process. Okay we've made our new hard drive here. We've copied it. So here's our old one and here's our new one. It's connected by USB. Now what we need to do is make this bootable. We do this by going to our system preferences, go to our startup disk, and select it in the list. This is the disk that's still inside the computer here, and this is our new one that's currently attached with USB. So we click restart, and click restart from here, and the computer will restart. And that's that. Okay, now that we have booted from our USB drive, which is this one, we still have our other internal drive. And 
uh, unless you do something about it, the internal it will be number one. It will be confusing because they both have the same material on it, and number two, you can. Um, it's still going to slow you down because it's the Mac's going to be indexing this and constantly running the drive platters, and that's why you probably want it to upgrade in the in the first place. So what we need to do is unmount this drive. So there's a couple of ways to do this. We can eject it like this, or we can also go to Disk Utility and eject it from here. Unmount. Okay, so I got it this from over here by uh, right clicking or control clicking, or over here we unmount from here. So I'll do it from Disk Utility, unmount Macintosh HD. They both have the same name, which is confusing. And it will unmount it and it will go away eventually from here. It's still working, it's still working down here, we can see. Aha, started using it already. Can't get away from it. Okay. And what you'll see, I had to quit doing something. I don't know what program it was using. There's a finder window opening. What you'll see once you've managed to unmount the drive that your computer will continue to run because it's run from this machine, this drive. Now, if you want to, you can control click and rename it just so we can keep track of it. Okay, so that way if the other one comes back on, we'll know. And now we're running completely on the SSD drive. Now in this case, it, I'm running it from the USB port. And so I'm using the drive externally. So I'm on the USB port and I am here. USB high-speed bus. Now this is an older machine, 2006. So here's, my, here's the drive capacity. Is here removable, and this is the maximum speed 480 megabytes per second. That's pretty fast. Now, if I was to go to the trouble of mounting it inside the computer, I would have access to this, which is 1.5 gigabit per second. Now, these are theoretical limits, and uh, for the disk read and write speed, the old disk was on that uh, bus speed, the theoretical limit. But the disk was just, it was rotational and it was extremely uh, painful to work with this. If I work with it and I find that I'm mostly doing web development, that kind of thing, so it's very fast, small, files moving back and forth. Um, so I don't think that this is going to be an issue, this speed's going to be an issue. I need the, I'm more interested in latency. But anyway, that's how you do it, and I'm currently booted from, from the external drive. Um, and that's that. Hopefully this was informative.